So I'm building a 2D RAS model, and I've gotten to the point where I've got this bridge where I have to add these piers. These piers really affect the hydrodynamics to this bridge and the sediment transport. And so I'm going to have to add them to the model. We can turn on the map here. You can see where the bridge is, but if I, you know, I turn that off, you know, the, the piers aren't stamped into the train, and so I need to get them there. I need to add the piers to the train, and then I actually have to do another pretty important thing. Is It's not enough to just stamp the piers into the train. I actually also have to make the mesh accommodate them. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to show you like a couple of steps about how I did this. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to clone your train. This is kind of cool because you don't actually have to make a full copy of the train and fill up your drive. You actually just need to clone it and what it'll do is it'll point to the original train but then it'll keep track of the changes you made um so we're going to right click on this 2013 lidar and we're going to say clone terrain and i'm going to call this peer demo and there we go now we have a cloned terrain and so i'm going to turn this one off i'm going to turn this one on and it comes with modifications. Now, it, there's no modifications in there. That's just a bucket for the modifications, but we're gonna modify this by adding peers. And so what you'll see is I, I just kind of digitized the location of these peers. I just added these profile lines so I'd know where they go. And um, so I'm gonna go to modifications and I'm gonna right click on it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit the layer and then I'm gonna add modification and I'm gonna go to shapes. Now there's lots of things you can do here. Um, I, I actually am gonna do another video on how to do weirs and structures and rebasins with these. You can also go and you can cut channels with these. These are incredibly powerful. Um, but we're just gonna to go to elongated pier. And I'll just call this piers, that's great. And you'll see it gives me this little generic pier right here. And uh, that is not the pier that I want. Those are not the piers that you're looking for. Um, but I'm gonna drop it anyways. And I'm going to get this editor now, and that's going to let me modify this peer kind of in place. And so um, the first question is, do you want to replace the terrain value? Yeah, we're just going to stamp this in so that when you know Raz sees the terrain, it sees this as the highest point. Um, the elevation is actually, this is a coastal system, so the bottom of the bridge is actually 45 feet. Um, we're going to rotate this 65 degrees. How do I know that? Because I measured beforehand. Trial and error is another way you could do that. And then this is seven feet wide. Um, and then I actually want my pier to have um, sharp noses because that's what it has in the field. Um, and in each case, the, the sharp nose is five, which is just going to give it a triangle at the end. And the length of these noses are 45. OK, and so if I say OK, it, stamp, it stamps the pier you know, exactly where I put it, rotates it, and you can move this around. Um, but that's where this pier is going to go. But then the, the next thing it does, it says, hey, chances are if this is a pier, you're going to want more than one of these. And so it gives me this template. And so I can actually just move this around and stamp it wherever I want else I want it to be. And so I know I want another one right here. So boom, I'm going to stamp it right there. It says, hey, what's this? Well, we'll call it pier two. That sounds great. And I'll say, OK. And then I have my peers, and I can keep stamping peers as long as I want, but this bridge only has two, so um, that's all we need. So we're going to come here, and we're going to say, stop editing. Do you want to save edits to modifications? Yes, I do. And then if I plot the train profile, you'll see that we actually have two peers in our, uh, in our bridge profile. We are ready to go. OK, so we got peers. We should run, right? No, nah, not yet, because we have peers in our train but we have to accommodate them in our grid. And so now I'm gonna go back up to my geometry and I'm going to make a new geometry. I'm gonna save geometry as, and I'll call this peer demo. And of course, um, we'll go into our geometry associations and we'll manage our association. So uh, the peer demo geometry, well, that's going to be with the peer demo terrain, which is really just the base LIDAR with these peer uh, modifications that we've made. All right, and so if I turn that on, you'll see that, you know, what what is going to happen if we run this? Well, it's not going to see the full, it's not going to get the full force of those peers. At least we have a center line, so, you know, it's not like the peer is in the middle of the cell and you're going to kind of miss that effect, you're going to miss that cloud, but I still want to represent these peers in the mesh in a more realistic way. And so the way I'm going to do that 
is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a refinement region um, for the pier itself. Now this gets a little bit tricky. And so I'm going to go in to 2D flow areas. I'm going to start editing the refinement region. And so now I'm just going to draw a refinement region that basically follows this pier. And so if I can get my cells to follow that, and if I can make more importantly, if I can get my cell faces to follow that, it will completely occlude this area from my model. And so I'm going to call this um, pier one. Okay. And so then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to enforce my region. And how did that go? Well, that went poorly. Um, I'm not sure that that's a lot better than it was. Um, we did get cells that kind of filled this center area. I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to change my refinement region properties. Um, these cells are, you know, they're, they're 10, to, 10 to 15 foot cells. And uh, this pier, you know, it's seven feet wide. And so that we got about six there. So. I'm actually going to go in and say, you know, my my refinement region is actually going to be six by six. Um, and then I'm going to check this enforcement off. And if I come in here and I enforce all regions, I actually get a pretty nice fit. But it's not going to be perfect. You know, as with a lot of mesh editing, there's a lot of manual editing that happens um, in order to get things the way you want them. So we're going to move these around a little bit so that we get the pier that we want. But you know, this is not terrible. Um, I don't really like the way that nose is, is, uh, is coming out. And so I'm going to move this around to try to capture the nose. Um, in order to do that, maybe I'll drop one here and one here, and that'll give me a better, um, a better run up to the nose. And there you go. So that, uh, that drops better. And so there's just a little bit of manual work you have to do here. But before long, what you have is a mesh that actually you know, tracks the modification itself. And so it represents the, the modification that you've made in not only in the terrain, but also along the cell faces so that the subgrid can see that, hey, this is there. Um, nothing's going to go through it. Um, it's not actually sharing um, cells substantially with this occlusion. Um, and uh, so then if you go in and model it, you'll see that we're getting increased velocities through the bridge because of the occlusion of the piers. And you know this pier that has the center line through it, um, it's, it's not performing poorly you you are getting flow split around that but there is some confusion going on about what's happening at the nose of the pier whereas the uh the pier we just did you know you're getting a kind of a better flow split around it um and uh, you know a better flow shadow my name is stanford gibson i'm the sediment specialist on the hc ras team and this video was funded by the hh and c set program